Hey guys, I know some of you must be sick of the sight of Fedora videos on this channel as of late, but uh, I thought I might do one more um, because I was checking out the KDE remix of Fedora 25 this morning. I wasn't intending on doing a video about it, but I have recently been intrigued to see how the KDE slash Plasma desktop is, is coming along. And I thought I might, well, I was quite impressed with Fedora 25. I kind of know what to expect from it as a distribution under the hood. So I thought, well, it might be a good opportunity for me to, to try out KDE on Fedora uh, and, and just see what the quality of not only the desktop is, but also the, um, you know, the whole distribution as well. So um, this isn't going to be necessarily a traditional first impressions review like we're used to on this channel. This is just going to be me rambling about the KDE respin of Fedora 25. If you want a bit more of a traditional this channel kind of review of Fedora 25, then the GNOME video, the first video I did um, on the Fedora 25 distribution is going to be that. This is just going to be a bit of a casual chit chat, just uh, showing you guys what I've been up to today really, um, and, uh, and, and what the KDE uh, respin of Fedora 25 looks like. So, um, as you can see here, I've been playing around with the aesthetics. Like, so for example, I've put the KDE bar up on the left-hand side here. Um, the reason I did that is, um, you know, it, I, I try out different desktop paradigms. I try them out for a few reasons. One is just to keep um, keep me from forming habits too deeply. So what I mean is I might move a taskbar around uh, every couple of months just so I'm used to looking somewhere different for my window buttons and my task uh, bar and my, my start button and all that kind of stuff so that I don't become too institutionalized or I, you know my habits don't become too strong that I kind of get irked whenever I don't see a task bar at the bottom of the street, st uh, screen or um, you know or it has to be on the left or on the side and a lot of people I know use computers in different ways so I try and use computers in, in different ways and try and mix things up quite a lot as well so that I can kind of um, get a better grip of what other people are looking for from their computers so I thought you know, what would it look like if we had a, a, a vertical bar on the KDE desktop? And I've got to say, it suits quite nicely, doesn't it? It's uh, If you've got like a wider display, I know I'm on the 4-3 aspect ratio because I'm in a virtual machine today, but if this was a wider desktop, maybe even one of those ultra-wide screens that look really quite nice, uh, you've got plenty of uh, horizontal screen real estate that you could use up, and it might just make a lot more sense. It even adjusts the um, the start panel here. Now, what I have done as well, I've made a few um, adjustments because it's, it's really just been me, me playing around. Uh, as you can see, I have employed the breezy dark theme. So if I bring up uh, the file manager, um, and you, if you right-click on them, you should be able to yeah show a launcher when not running. So that, that allows you to, uh, to have a, a sort of a Mac-esque sort of Windows-y kind of panel feel here. Very, it feels very professional, very polished, um, like what you would expect from a Windows 10 or Mac style desktop. So this is the, um, the breezy dark theme. This is the, the I believe, um, breeze is the default theme for icons and for uh, the taskbar, uh, the, the, the buttons and the uh, the mouse icon as well. And I think that, that that is, you know, Breeze to to KDE 5 is like what um, Adweta is to GTK 3. It's like the default um, looking app style and it looks real nice. And I do like Dolphin as a, um, as a file manager. I mean, you know, doesn't that just look, you know, it's got all the, all the customizability. You can even, um, there is a a view mode and you can you can basically put the the file preferences view buttons at the top like you would do on a traditional uh but for some reason I cannot find that today maybe it's in the uh, preferences or what have you but yeah, I mean, this doesn't this look beautiful? Doesn't this look nice? And also, um, because I'm running it in a virtual machine and I'm not really dedicating too many system resources to it, I'm recording as well, I've got you know, stuff on in the background, um, I've turned off compositing and I've turned off all the fancy effects. So everything is like instant. So this is uh, as close to XFCE as, as I can really expect, right? So these windows look quite nice. They don't bleed into each other in the same way that they did for um, for the cinnamon desktop. Although there is, you know, there is a nice little sort of bordering around here, uh, and also you can adjust the board. In fact, to be honest, 
if you look at anything, right, and you're asking yourself, hmm, I wonder if I can customize that, this is the KDE Plasma desktop. You can customize anything. So anyway, enough onto the little faff, right? So if I close the um, the file manager, uh, you'll see the file manager icon there is, is now s sort of snuggled up in the... Um, uh, in the taskbar. So this is the, the terminal. This is a nice looking terminal as well. This was me installing the Steam client. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you could, and you can. So you've got that there. Uh, and you could log into an existing account, which I will not do because if you log into... I think you can log into one or two Steam accounts at the same time and then it starts logging you out of your old sessions. I, I also installed Chromium uh, to see if that was easy enough, and it was. I did that on the, the GNOME version as well. Uh, I also installed RPM Fusion, and the RPM Fusion, so I installed, I used that package there and that package there, and they installed perfectly, smoothly, uh, and negative 017, I was looking at this, uh, and this covers a lot of multi, you know, negative 017.org is a, re a Fedora repository uh, that is designed for proprietary uh, NVIDIA drivers, as you can see here, the Steam client, this is where I got the Steam client from. Uh, there is something for Skype. I don't know. Uh, purple Skype, okay. A Skype for Pigeon. So this seems more like the native, uh, or not the native Skype client, the old Skype client, whereas the new one is, is an Electron app, which if you're running Fedora, Electron apps are probably not going to be something that you're really going to want day in, day out. If you're Instead of using Electron apps, if you're using Fedora, you're probably better off just going straight to the web app. So you can go to um, uh, web.skype.com, I believe. And then there you go. And this is basically what the Electron app will be. It'll be like a little window and it'll take you straight into Skype. So... I wouldn't necessarily bother with that. And I I have mixed feelings about third-party repositories when it comes to things like this. Um, it, it It is an issue that you need to install third-party repositories in order to uh, get what is effectively sort of like home usage out of a Fedora installation. But Fedora is a big, serious, proper company, and they need to be 100% legal. And they do have this... Um, they do have this like allegiance to free and open source software which is which is really quite strong and they don't compromise that in their their core repositories uh, in any of their the repositories that come with fedora as standard which is why you need the third party uh, repositories to to gain that kind of functionality so i respect the decision that they made but um it is also and and, and there are people that work on fedora that work on rpm fusion so um so it's not like RPM Fusion is really unofficial. It's just, I believe, unofficial. But, you know, it's it's almost as good as. Like, it is the go-to place for things like the Chromium web browser. Um, and um, and I've heard a lot of people talk about uh, negative 017org This also seems like another go-to place for uh, NVIDIA drivers, specifically. So, uh, and this is, of course, just the uh, the Fedora website. The Fedora, of course, they are looking at the potential possibility of a long-term support release, which I'm very excited about. That would definitely make Fedora usable in a lot more situations in my day-to-day -day life if they decide to go with the long-term support release. So, um, now what I usually do when I talk when I talk about GTK desktop environments uh, is how well do they show Qt. Um, applications well let's do the reverse today so this is the gnome hard disk tool it's a really good hard disk management tool uh, i i think the kde version is just as good but i decided to install gnome disk uh, which is the gnome disk tools uh, to sort, sort out partitioning and formatting drives and all that kind of stuff uh, because i know that it's a gtk3 app you can see by these client side decorations um, and what you can do is you can customize with system settings. You can customize how GTK3 apps look. Um, application style, of course. Here. So whereas I've got the Breeze style here, and this is the Breeze dark style. Uh, this I've got the uh, Adwaita dark and the Adwaita dark for GTK2 and GTK3 themes. Um, 
with the Oxygen Sans 10. Oh, it's a lovely font. I absolutely love it. Um, so you've got, I've got two dark themes basically because I you could probably find a way to install like other themes like Vertex and um, an Arc, which are two themes that are really quite nice as well. Uh, I believe that they're both available from the Manjaro repositories, uh, normal, but you might have to go third party to find them available on Fedora. So um, I can shut this down. And yeah, Chromium, that works a treat as well. Works a treat. So, um, and then these are all the uh, these are all the settings. Now, there was, I, I again, with bundled software, I don't usually make too big of a deal about it, especially in distributions like Fedora, which I consider to be all-purpose all distributions, I would say. But Fedora perhaps leans a little bit more on the people that are comfortable using Linux. Um, rather than, say, maybe like Ubuntu or Mint, who are really, I would say, more suitable at accommodating uh, Windows converts. Fedora is a Linux distribution for Linux users, I've always found. It's really, really good at that, but it doesn't pander to uh, people that expect Windows, basically. So, uh, what I did, right, is the software center that came with it, was one called Discover. It's the one that we saw in Corora, which I thought was okay, but wasn't really that enamored by. Um, which makes me, which ex, which goes a fair way to explaining why Corora uh, decided to to put it in with its KDE release. Um, I mean, it's not bad. Like you search for a for a program. Does it? Does it? Does it? Um, no. So it doesn't include, so if I did say Chromium, for example, yeah, so it only has that Chromium game, which is a pretty good game. But um, so with the software center here, it doesn't actually pick up third party. Oh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. There we go. Okay. I'm not going to faff around with those settings, but yeah, you can actually, uh, you can select the RPM Fusion uh, packages there. So that, that software center, that mediocre looking software center was the one that came with the KDE version of Fedora. But I installed the GNOME software center, which was a very simple command. It was sudo dnf space install space GNOME dash software. And it came up with this again, another GTK3 app that looks really quite nice. Um, and it was, it was as simple as installing um, any other app. And uh, it gave me all the functionality that I needed to. Again, if you're if you don't like install, you know, if you don't like using GTK apps in a Qt environment, then obviously you don't want to use this. Uh, the command line, the DNF command, is fantastic. It's amazing. Installing stuff for the command lines just as easy as it is on Ubuntu, Manjaro, Arch, any other distribution. Perfectly easy from that from that regard. Um, yeah, so you can do third party. So Chromium, for example, is there. I expect Steam should be there as well. Okay, maybe not. Um, yeah, so Chromium is there. So uh, I assume you just have to configure the repositories, but um, but I, I suppose I would you know have the natural inclination personally to go to the command line. It just is quicker. It's easier. Uh, it gets to the point straight away. So um, thanks for listening to me witter on for a short while about the Fedora KDE respin or remix, whatever it's been called. I really do quite like it. The re really, the only criticism I can give about it is that it comes with the Discover Software Center and not the GNOME one. But considering this is clearly not its flagship uh, desktop environment, I'm more than happy to overlook it. And the reason I was looking it up is because if GNOME, if Fedora does get its long-term support release, maybe once a year or once every other year, it has a long-term support release that has three to five years of security updates. Um, that means I'm much more likely to install it on pe other people's computers because it's got, you know, Fedora's got a big company, a huge community, it's been going a long time, it's very reliable, they've churned out great dist release after great release after great release. Um, it is it is something that I would like to make more use of, but the biggest thing holding me back is the fact that it doesn't have a long-term support release. And if it did, um, and it's not finalized yet, it might not actually necessarily happen, but I, as I understand it, there are people talking about it. Um, that would, would make me want to deploy it in a lot more use cases. However, GNOME 3 
is not something that I can put onto a laptop and expect a Windows user to jump on and use. Now, GNOME 3 is really easy to use. Most people would probably work it out in a few minutes, but something like KDE, where, where you can just cl click on a button at the bottom of the screen, obviously it's the side here, and then there's some favorites. So that means, you know, if you've set up a computer to do a limited number of tasks, you put all those, the applications to do those tasks in the favorites, jobs are good in. Uh, it also has the search feature, so you can just type in Chromium and then it, it takes you to where you need to go. So, and, and it looks like Windows 7. Um, it looks like it's a familiar interface, which is great, whereas GNOME doesn't. So KDE is is a you know it's a it's a good option uh, it's a good gnome alternative for something a bit more familiar to a lot of people now i know fedora aren't going for that market but it is nice to know that they've got a really good version of their distribution that can um that can be that can be that can be you know that has kde a strong kde game basically uh, and it looks good it looks great so thank you very much for watching that's about it from me today let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and uh, until next time I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.